And Nancy Cordes is in Phoenix, Arizona. And again, Nancy, we just heard Hillary Clinton make that case to voters there in Arizona. How confident, though, is the campaign that Arizona turns blue? Acknowledge that it's a stretch, Josh. I mean, she has always been close to Trump uh, in the polling that's been done in the past few weeks, but uh, not ever ahead. And they just don't have the operation here in Arizona to get out the vote that they do in battleground states because they weren't anticipating that it would be this close. So, you know, they're trying to capitalize on these tight polls, but it's not clear that she'll be able to get over the finish line. But Beyond that, they're happy to come here to Arizona to make the case, even if they don't win here, because uh, it sends a message they believe to Latino voters in particular in a couple other important battleground states, Nevada and Florida, that she is courting them, that she cares about their vote. Uh, you know, Hispanics make up 30 percent of the population here in Arizona. It's similar in Nevada. Uh, it's a growing population in Florida as well. And right now, it looks like the Latino early vote is very strong. And this is a community that overwhelmingly favors Democrats typically. And those numbers look even better for them this time around because of some of the things that Donald Trump has said. And uh, the early Latino vote turnout, of course, the good news perhaps for the Clinton campaign. And they need it, especially in a state like North Carolina, where uh, returns have not been, it would appear, uh, so good for the Clinton campaign early on. She'll be there today uh, with Bernie Sanders campaigning uh, at her right. side. And as polls now show that 8% uh, of likely voters remain undecided, that is really the margin of error in a race that's tightening by the day. So what do you expect to hear from Senator Sanders today? Well, you know, Senator Sanders has been arguing pretty strenuously uh, against Donald Trump, even more than he argues often for Hillary Clinton, arguing uh, that Donald Trump is uh, bad for the environment, that he's bad for minorities, that he's bad for education. And you're starting to hear an increasingly dark vision from Hillary Clinton as well when it comes to Donald Trump. In the past couple of days, uh, she has devoted a large part of her speeches to essentially walking voters through what a Donald Trump presidency would look like in her eyes. She's saying, imagine that it is January 20th and Donald Trump is being sworn in in front of the Capitol. Imagine that he's there in the Oval Office having communications with foreign leaders. Imagine how he would treat minorities. And it's almost as if uh, rather than trying to motivate voters to go to the polls out of a devotion to the Democratic Party or a devotion to her, they're trying to scare Democrats essentially into getting out and voting. It's been a variation perhaps of what we've seen from Donald Trump, certainly as he's remained on message in days recent regarding uh, the email investigation and the letter sent by FBI Director Jim Comey. Uh, to that point, we heard the president weigh in yesterday in an interview and he had remained uh, really above the fray perhaps to this point, but he was critical of uh, the director for alerting Congress about those new messages that may or may not be significant. How did the campaign react? Well, I, you know, I think that they definitely welcomed that because up until this point, the White House has really tried to stay neutral in this fight between the Clinton campaign and the FBI. They're saying, you know, the FBI is a very difficult job to do. We don't want to second guess them. The president walked a little bit closer to the campaign side in that interview. He said that the FBI director shouldn't be spreading innuendo, shouldn't be working off of incomplete information. He didn't directly accused the FBI director of doing that. He just said the FBI shouldn't do that, uh, but still his implication was clear. And he went on to say that uh, the FBI had already determined this summer that while Hillary Clinton may have made a mistake by using a private server, that she didn't do anything criminal. So he left no doubt about where he stands on this issue. And quickly, uh, Nancy, I may have buried the lead on this day of days for any Chicago native and Cubs fan. Exactly how was uh, last night's goings on enjoyed by certain specific members of the campaign? <laughs> well, uh, Hillary Clinton is from the Chicago area, so she is a Cubs fan. And actually, um, we had this long wait after her event here in Phoenix, sitting on the bus, waiting uh, to head to the hotel where uh, we were all staying for the night because the motorcade was essentially frozen in place. She was watching the game. She had uh, an aide of hers pull it up 
on an iPad that was hooked up to a sling box, so they were <laughs> able to catch the last couple innings of the game. Um, and, uh, and if there were, if the uh, excitement um, among her and her team was anything like the excitement on the press bus, um, it was pretty electric. And, um, and so eventually we did get rolling, but uh, I expect we'll see some very bleary-eyed members of the campaign and the press corps this morning. It was interesting on social media last night. A lot of people at first were tweeting like, oh, this is so nice to have this blessed relief, this, this pause from the tension of the election. And yeah. by, by 1 a.m., it was, I can't, this is just like the election. I can't, I can't, I can't handle it. All right. Hey, Nancy Curtis, <laughs> uh, as always, we do appreciate it. Travel safely. We'll see you later today. Thanks, Josh.